I survived 200 days in Hardcore Better Minecraft Plus. My goals are to get Dragon Steel Armor, the best in the game. Then I want to fully conquer every single dimension. Last but not least, I want to get a full dragon army with stage 5 dragons. Day 101 to day 102, the first thing I started doing was getting this dragon forge prepared. I had raided tons of dread dungeons so I just checked how many blocks I had. I also turned some dragon skills into blocks and realized I needed to kill more dragons. I then teleported over to some ice biomes and went out to look. While I was here I made sure to kill as many sheep and cows as possible. Turns out I killed almost every single ice dragon in these biomes but I kept searching in other directions. During these travels I raided tons of battle towers but had no luck on any ice dragons. That all changed the next day. Right after I burnt this pirate ship down I stumbled into a dread dungeon. Lucky for me I had a spare key and went inside. I remember now why I hated this place. These mobs are insane. The deeper I got into this dungeon the more mobs spawn all the way until the bottom floor which had so many mobs I basically just stood on the staircase thinning the hurt as much as I could. I even fell down a few times and this was not good for my armor at all. Whatever I was doing was not working so I just ran in and broke as many of the spawners as I could and this made life way easier and now I could pick up all the dragon forge stuff. It turns out I needed one more of these dragon scale blocks to make the core so I took off to find another ice biome. This one had a dragon thank god and after taking it out I used Use the scales to make some dragon forge blocks which then allowed me to make the ice core. All these poor dragons were finally used to complete my dragon forge. I placed my ice dragon down and I was really paranoid that it would destroy my house so I picked it up really quick. Day 105 to day 106 to stop this dragon from flying away I made some iron chains and chained it up. This worked like a charm and my forge was finally producing ice dragon steel ingots. I got about 5. Then again my dragon was not listening so I had to move the forge somewhere else so that my base would be safe. This was a much better place and I got enough ingots to make an ice dragon steel chest plate and leggings which were significantly stronger than my gear. Slowly but surely I made the rest of the pieces and even a sword. All this left me with 3 ingots to spare. I then spent the rest of the night grinding out a bunch of XP which got me up to level 93. I ended up getting some okay enchantments the first round and the only piece that was decent was the leggings which had protection 5 and unbreaking 5. So I disenchanted the rest of this armor and started working on it again. The second time around was also pretty bad except for the helmet which was protection 5. The bad enchants were really not going away so I started using some of my enchanted books. Slowly but surely I was able to put unbreaking and mending on most of the dragon steel armor. After scrapping some of the old pieces I had, I actually ended up with a really nice set of enchanted ice dragon steel armor. Next up I needed to make this ice dragon steel sword really strong. So after gathering some levels, I started fiddling with the enchants. And with all these levels, I actually ended up extracting some of these cool affixes from other armor pieces I had. I placed a rare affix on my leggings which gave me more hearts and armor toughness. In between grabbing levels, I also killed some of my sheep which meant even more dragon meals. The next enchant I got on my sword was insane though. Sharpness 7. I immediately started looking for looting books or looting gear that I could disenchant. I then started enchanting a bunch of tomes which actually got me looting and some other cool stuff. Day 109, combining all these books together gave me the perfect sword which I finished off with a mending book and a looting ancient tome. I tried this sword out on the mob farm and it was really OP since it somehow froze and put the enemy on fire. I then needed some more affixes so I went out to the desert to fight tons of apotheosis mobs. The desert ended up only spawning bandits so I moved over to the plains biome where I got some really nice leggings and some nice boots. Day 110 I extracted the good affixes which took most of my XP and started placing them on my new armor. These affixes cost tons of levels so I had to grind a bunch. After all of that I had way more hearts. The only piece of armor that still needed affixes was my helmet so I fought tons of mobs at night and found a portal to a new dimension. Good thing I had tons of hearts of the seas for my oceanographer and this activated the portal. It turned out that this dimension was called the depth and I was taking damage at like random spots. I even swapped to the scuba gear but I was still taking damage here. I already completed the quest so I just came home because I had no idea what this dimension needed me to do. The next morning I found out this dragon egg was a lightning dragon. It also started raining so I placed this egg down and waited for this little man to hatch. I snatched the dragon up as soon as it hatched and moved my nether portal down to the spawner area as well. Across the nether portal I also made an under garden portal which I lit up with a catalyst from killing some nether thing. Before I hopped in I made a diamond shield which matched the armor and then enchanted it. I put some nice books plus mending on it and it was set. I then jumped into this new crazy dimension and had some mobs to kill while I was here. First up was this thing called a stoneborn so I started flying around and checking out the area. 
I killed a bunch of these weird looking mobs and flew over some really dark biomes. This is where I found an actual strong looking mob. It was a brute. I also realized I could just use this explorer's compass and find wherever these mobs spawn. This helped me find this rot beast whose reward was some really cool swords. Right after that, I ended up finding a stoneborn who just dropped pebbles. Next up, I needed to take down the Forgotten Guardian. Now this guy spawns in the catacombs, which I used the compass to find. I broke into this weird structure and made my way down the staircase. This guardian looked like a transformer, but it was no match at all. I also grabbed whatever I could from the catacombs and got my quest reward, which was a Masticator spawn egg. This was the final boss of the dimension. I summoned it on a cool looking biome and oh boy was this thing ugly. It also had some crazy reach, but all it took was a few arrows and it was a breeze destroying this dude. My reward for this entire dimension was a scarab which allowed me to go to the Atum dimension. Day 113 to day 114, before I went down to the Atum dimension, I killed tons of my sheep and then while hunting for even more animals, I found this blue skies villager's house. This is where I grabbed the blocks for an ever bright portal. I also bought this Zeolighter which activates these portals and then I realized I only had level 1 beacon effects the entire time. So I upgraded all of that and then started doing decorations to the base. I started with a path connecting all the way down to the mines which I added texture to. And right after that I wanted to make the walls of these mines look good. So I started by placing oak support beams around the walls and in between all these oak logs I placed deep slate which made the area look slick. I didn't like how uniform it was so I replaced the centers of each of the deep slate area with deep slate tiles and the outer edges with deep slate bricks. I replaced the rest of the deep slate patches all around the mines as well and then to end these days I grew my lightning dragon some more and placed more diamond chests in the storage system. The next morning I broke the undergarden portal and set up the everbright portal. I also jumped in really quick to get some quest rewards and see what was up. This reminded me to explore a tomb first. I then came right back to collect some more sand to make sandstone. The portal was really simple and I set it up right on the beach. All I needed to do was drop a scarab into the pool. With that being said, I jumped in and spawned in a tomb. My ultimate goal here was to take down some pharaohs. The quest also asked me to kill a bunch of random mobs. First off, I wanted to take out a mummy, but I ended up killing the surgeon instead. This dimension also had tons of lightning strikes, which means there were more OP mobs and crazy affixes. I then eventually ended up killing a mummy and then got two rewards, which were all dirty artifacts. Later that night, I found a pyramid, but I couldn't open it yet since it required Nebu torches. I searched this village hoping for some torches in these crates, but sadly there were none. So these Nebu ores also spawn underground, so I hopped right into this cave and tore through huge parts of it. Sadly, I ended up getting no Nebu ores. Once I surfaced from the cave, I got attacked by a bandit patrol and ended up taking out all the bandit types. I still needed to kill an assassin though. So while I waited for more bandits, I cleaned all these dirty coins and jewelry and then I finally got marked, which meant assassins are coming for me. I stole the iron golem's kill and had two quests left in a tomb. One of them was to take out a pharaoh. I then flew around looking for structures where I could get nebu torches. I ended up finding this pretty big abandoned structure and found some nebu torches here. With this, I opened up the pyramid, broke the spawners on the top floors, and once I started getting lower, I had to fight through some of the traps and mazes. Eventually, I found another set of ladders which led to the bottom floor. I knew where the pharaoh was, so I explored the other two sides first and then went to the sarcophagus. This just required four nebu torches to activate and once I tried to open the sarcophagus, a pharaoh spawned. Now I eviscerated the pharaoh and everything else that was summoned there. Then I also cleaned some of the artifacts and equipped a ton of them. Before the night ended, I took out another pharaoh and got some even more items. Day 117 to day 118, I got everything I needed from this dimension so I teleported right back home. I had collected tons of ores which I put in the furnaces and then all the enchanted gears I collected I put into the chests. After that I fixed up the rest of these mines with deep slate and oak logs then I started working on the roof. I started by spacing out the glowstone on the roof and then filled the roof with stone bricks. After all of that the mines were fully decked out and looking kinda nice. I ended these days by expanding the furnaces and even made some blast furnaces as well. Day 119 to day 120, I grabbed tons of levels and went to this gatekeeper villager to buy the blue book. This was an overworld quest and it gave me the Everdawn portal blocks too. Real quick, I went to grab tons more meat to make dragon meals and I found a pirate ship while I was searching, which I of course burnt down. In total, I was able to make 8 dragon meals from tons of cows and sheep that I killed. At least I fought a fire dragon though, which meant I could get a bunch of fire dragon scales. The next day, I found some more waystones and fought another fire dragon. This dragon was trying to eat the cows that I needed. 
Later on that day, I found another waystone and an ice dragon. I was also close to this pillager windmill, which I recognized from almost a hundred days ago. I had to take out another fire dragon here first, and then I explored whatever was left of the windmill. I also accidentally activated one of the traps and a bunch of TNT exploded. The loot on the top floor was actually really nice. It was tons of gold, iron, and diamonds. Before these days ended, I somehow fought another fire dragon and found a glowing forest which had a waystone. Day 121, I found a bunch of these cyclops caves and it was a gold mine for sheep and mutton. The chests were also filled with mutton and this gave me 24 dragon meals. All of that finally made my lightning dragon rideable. Later that night, I also saved a village from a fire dragon and got more sheep from another cyclops cave. Day 122 to day 124. To prepare for more dimensions, I went to collect some sand so I could make more potions. I then made an iron fishing rod so I could start brewing water breathing potions. The enchants on the rod were really good. I fished for a little bit and even with high luck of the sea, I only caught a few puffer fish. At least now I had some spare water breathing potions. But this fishing trip gave me an idea to expand the base towards the beach. I started by covering this lava pool first and then I placed dirt over the obsidian to match the rest of the landscape. After covering as much as I could, I removed the trees that would be in the way of the path. Then from the main path, I branched all the way down towards the beach. To spruce things up, I started sprinkling cobblestone, stone, gravel around the path as well. Since all of that was done, I placed fences around all the path to hold torches and lanterns since just having them on the ground was ugly. Last but not least, I made a dock to stand on while fishing, and since I only had oak wood, I tried to make it not look super bland. I also put a waystone here too, but now that the outside was done, I placed some more armor stands and pedestals inside of the house to show off more loot. Then I used some more ice dragon blood to make more ice dragon steel ingots. I wanted to make a dragon steel pickaxe and an axe. I spent the rest of these days enchanting these two items and they ended up being really good. The pickaxe was efficiency 8, fortune 5, and unbreaking 5. Day 125, while enchanting the axe, I tried out this new pickaxe and it tore through literally everything. I collected as many ores as I could and got up to level 81 to enchant this axe. It took me a few tries, but I got some really good enchants for it too. Unbreaking 4, efficiency 4, and chainsaw. I then smelt every single ore that I collected and placed a lectern under my bed to be fancy. I also upgraded a goddess statue, but it just became a light source and nothing else really changed. Day 126 to day 127, I discovered that you could make oak posts and I placed it everywhere because I just thought it looked cool. I then expanded the sheep farm and placed these end stone stairs leading down to the mines because it looked really cool. After that, I bought a trident from the oceanographer and I started enchanting that. The chants I got were crazy. I didn't even know you could put looting on it. And last but not least, I found this pillager castle and placed a sleeping bag down. As soon as I woke up, I barged into this castle and started destroying the illagers. By far the most annoying dude here is the illusioner who blinds you and splits into five versions. Aside from that, the loot over here was incredible. There were tons of ingots, ores, totems of undying, and some super rare artifacts. At one point, I think I was attacked by like a hundred vindicators. And once the bottom floor was cleared, I grabbed everything, even the bookshelves, and I noticed these chests had some really nice ancient tomes. The next floor was pretty much the same thing. Tons of pillagers, loot, and tomes. And finally, I tore through the top floor, grabbing everything, and spent the majority of my time just converting nuggets into ingots and ingots into blocks. I would say this dungeon was a success though. On the flight back home, I hunted some more sheep and cows, which gave me 10 more dragon meals. But more importantly, my ice dragon was stage five now. It was gigantic. Day 130 to day 131, I wanted to complete some overworld quests like taking down Frostmaw. The compass couldn't find a spawn anywhere near me. Instead, I fought like three ice dragons whose blood I harvested and then farmed some mobs during this blood moon. Once those mobs burned up, I found a crazy mining system with these pickaxe holding zombies and skeletons. I made my way up this structure fighting tons of these dudes. Since it was a mining system, the loot here was a bunch of ingots and ores. As I made my way higher and higher up, I ended up mining some of these ore blocks too. The top floors had diamond armor wearing zombies and skeletons. In total, I had like three stacks of raw iron, two stacks of gold, and even more ingots on top. On the way back, I ended up fighting like my 10th ice dragon. Day 132 to day 134, I really needed to grow my light dragon so I explored some areas I had never been to. I immediately found some cows and a fire dragon who was trying to munch on them. I then found a battle tower which had a heart of the golem, a pretty good spellstone that I equipped. After that I took down two more fire dragons back to back. The next morning I found a mushroom structure and got attacked by these crazy looking mobs. 
So in total, I had 13 dragon meals, which I fed my lightning dragon, and it was rideable now. I did one more round of dragon feeding, and now this lightning dragon was almost stage 5. While traveling some more, I stumbled into an abandoned prison and went inside. There were a few spawners here and some barrels, but the loot was alright. I took whatever was good, made my way back home, and fed this dragon some more. So this dragon was also huge now, and it needed one more meal to be stage 5, which was super annoying. With most of the overworld stuff done, I quickly went into the Atum Dimension to finish off the entire questline. I needed to take out a stone guard and these guys spawn underground so I dug down really quick and used my mini map to see where they would be. I ended up finding one of these guys and completed the entire dimension. Then I lit the ever bright portal again and went into the dimension. My first goal was to collect 4 dungeon keys and they're all in this wizard's tower which I breezed through and picked up a key from every floor. I placed the four keys on top of the tower and the summoner spawned. Regular weapons are weak here, but I collected some wood from this dimension just in case. Even then, my ice dragon steel sword did tons of damage whenever I did manage to hit the boss. I played cat and mouse with this summoner a bunch of times as it just started teleporting around. But slowly, I was able to take down its health. The golems though were pretty annoying and some of these attacks make you levitate. But other than that, the fight was pretty simple and you just have to keep hitting the summoner until it's dead. I ended up getting a trophy and a loot bag which had an arc. This one makes me 10% faster. Next up, I needed to fight the Starlit Crusher, and I made a pretty big mistake by not making an axe straight away. So this structure is much bigger and way more annoying since there's so many rooms. I went through every single one and it took me a super long time. Since some of these rooms you can only enter through like a specific direction, and the chests are hidden pretty well. Even then, I ended up getting the four dungeon keys and made my way up to the boss room to put the keys in. This fight took me forever because I thought my dragon steel axe would do fine. So the Starlight Crusher puts up these walls and makes it impossible to hit and you're supposed to use an axe to break down these walls. I really thought my axe would do some damage but it barely made a dent. Eventually I stopped being stupid and crafted a blue bright wood axe which did the trick breaking down the walls and exposing the crusher. Then I experienced my next challenge. My sword barely did any damage. Luckily my bow on the other hand did tons of damage plus lit the crusher on fire. This guy also summons vines from the ground and did tons of damage to my armor. Once you break down the walls it also does a weird weird spinning move and it stops moving for a while. This is when I did my attacks. Slowly after repeating the process a bunch of times, I got his health down to half. I had to make a few more of those axes though and my strategy changed a little. I set the crusher on fire and then attacked it with the axe. This did tons of damage and I was able to take this very annoying boss out. Now this guy gave me another arc plus a nether star. The arc gave me like two more hearts. Just like that, this dimension was conquered and I then came home to set up the portal for the Ever Dawn. Day 140 to day 141. My armor was damaged so I started repairing those. Then I was running out of food so I used a bunch of emeralds for golden carrots. After all of that, I started scrapping armor pieces and placing really good ones on my armor. I put some very high level protections and unbreaking on my ice dragon steel stuff. To really enhance some of the gear, I also used a bunch of those ancient tomes that I had. The trophies were also really cool so I put them up to display and made some of these furniture which I just sprinkled some in the house and some outside. There was also this very ugly thing in front of my house, the six beacons that I started to move underground. I dug down five blocks and started making an area to house all of these blocks. The bottom needed to be 11 by 11 at least. I slowly but surely managed to get the entire beacon underground and reactivated all the effects. Day 142, I made a good amount of night vision potions and I slaughtered all of my sheep. I wanted to replace it with cows instead so I snatched some up and got the farm started. I then made this dog bed for whenever I can get a wolf. Day 143 to day 147, now it was time to take on the ever dawn dimension. First up, I needed to find the alchemist. I flew around this cool dimension collecting some of the ores on the mountains but more importantly, I grabbed some wood in case I needed weapons. Then I found the alchemist tower and it was the same as the one in the Everlight dimension, so the keys were basically in the same places. Once I grabbed four, I went to the top and summoned the Alchemist. Now this guy was significantly less annoying than the Everlight dimension boss because there were no minions. But the Alchemist did teleport around way more. This guy dropped tons of things from the ceilings and even blinded me. That's not all though. Once the Alchemist health was halved, it started poisoning me more and more. I kept hitting this dude and eventually the Alchemist was also taken down. My reward was another trophy 
and an orc that gave me invisibility while I was sneaking. Next up was the final boss, the Arachnarch. Just like last time, this dungeon had way too many rooms and took me way too long to find all the keys. Thank goodness for those night vision potions at least. Even though it took me so many days, I got the four keys that were scattered around and unlocked the lair. The Arachnarch just stood there and I got some really good hits in, but it immediately slowed me down and started doing some mad poison damage. After that, it jumped on the ceiling and started spitting at me, which actually looked really cool. Once it came down, I did some more damage and got more than a quarter of its health down. While hitting it, I noticed that my Ice Dragon Steel Sword stopped doing a lot of damage, so I swapped to this Dimension Sword and that ended up doing some serious damage. In the final stage, this spider launched even smaller spiders, so I had to take care of those little things first. Once I took care of that, I laced the Arachnarch with tons of arrows and finished it off using my bow. The reward was another trophy and another arc which made me stronger while being poisoned. Just like that, the Everlight and Everdawn dimensions were complete. Day 148 to day 149, I came home and wanted to make a new bow since this one was almost broken. So I went into the nether to grab more nether white ingots. There were a bunch more piglin towers and nether ships for me to raid and every single time I'm here, I get like tons of gold blocks. Oh yeah, and I'm super stupid. I accidentally turned on another overlay in OBS. So you get to see this little square for the next few days. Uh, then I found a bastion, ripped through the fortress and came home with two nether white ingots. I chose to make a golderite bow because it can get looting and it took up all those netherite ingots that I just got. As soon as I enchanted this bow, it was absolutely insane. Power 8, unbreaking 6, punch 3, and looting 6 plus infinity. So just in case I needed to heal this bow, I made some mending mixtures too. Day 150 to day 152. So from completing those two dimensions, I got this traveler's logbook and it shows you how to make a portal for the twilight forest. It was kind of embarrassing how long it took me to set this portal up, but I got it eventually. I had to go and find poppies, but I'm pretty sure any flower would have worked. I just needed to throw a diamond in there. That ended up opening the portal, and after all of that, I decorated the area real quick, made even more dragon meals, and gold dragon armor for my lightning dragon. The next morning, I scouted some of the area around my base, and I found a spider cave, and you won't believe it. Turns out this cave was on top of a stage 4 dragon's nest. I drank my night vision potion, and jumped down to take this dragon out quickly before it flew up. I had to be really quick because I was worried about my base burning down. I killed it pretty quickly, but there were a good amount of mobs here. After all of that, I harvested the dragon and it dropped a fire dragon egg, which completed my dragon collection. I hatched this dragon underground so my house wouldn't burn down, and I snatched this little guy up and went looking out for more food to feed it. Then I used this ice dragon steel to make an ice dragon steel hoe, and I got some really good enchants on it, which made harvesting the wheat so much easier. Day 153 to day 155, I fixed the overlay, but because OBS updated, my recording messed up. I only did a few things though. Number one, I made this stack upgrade three, which was really easy to make, and it opened up way more space for my backpack. Number two, I got this void crystal from killing a weird mob in the end, which could only be killed by TNT. But forget about all that, because I finally found a wolf too, and I linked it with the bed, and I also put wolf armor on it too. Now it was time to take on the twilight forest. This dimension has tons of bosses and needs to be done in order. First I set up a waystone in here just in case, then I went to find the first boss, the naga. So there are tons of biomes here that you can't even go into without taking damage, and you need to take out some of the bosses first. I was careful, I found the maze, and I started firing some arrows at this giant snake and did some really early damage. Once the naga came closer, I was able to use my sword and completely demolished it. My reward was a bunch of scales, a trophy, and a cool miniature of the dungeon. Next up was a twilight lich, who spawns in some cool looking castle. Thank god for this explorer's compass. I was able to locate all these structures and just fly over to them. I broke into the tower through a little hole and found the main staircase. At the top of the tower is where the twilight lich is located. So this fight's kinda complicated since you can't do damage to the lich without breaking its shield. It also has some minions that you have to take care of as well, but as long as you bounce these ender pearl looking things back at the shield, you can slowly start breaking the defenses. Once the shield shattered, I was able to wipe the lich out with just 3 hits. My reward again was a trophy and a cool miniature of the dungeon.
The next boss in line was the Minnow Shroom, who spawned in the labyrinth. It looked like a huge well and I just hopped right in. The mobs in here were like scorpions and beetles and of course minotaurs. I navigated through the labyrinth going deeper and deeper underground until I saw the room where the Minnow Shroom was supposed to spawn. The boss saw me and broke the fence but it was no match at all to the new bow. Make sure you're not as stupid as me and you eat the meat stroganoff because this is supposed to make you stop taking damage from the weird biomes. I had no clue though and I went to take on the Hydra which was the coolest boss I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to take damage in this biome but I guess my fire resistance kept me safe. The Hydra, just like the Lich, is another boss where you have to launch its projectiles right back into its heads. My bow was only doing slight damage, but the real chunks of health started going down when I timed the fireball. I ended up taking out the Hydra, I picked up my rewards, which was another trophy and some dragon scales. Next boss was the Knight Phantom, who spawned in a Knight Stronghold. So I found the Stronghold, but I had no clue what to do since I couldn't break blocks or kill any mobs around the area. Turns out you had to place a trophy on the pedestal, and it opened up the rest of the dungeon. Now the dungeon itself was also super stupidly complicated, and it took me a really long time just to find out how to get to the bottom floor. I did end up finding the graveyard for the Knight Phantom anyway, and these guys were very weird. They were just a bunch of floating armors who held a bunch of different items. They were actually super weak and I picked up the trophy and collected some of the armor pieces. I then teleported straight home since I needed more night vision potions and while I was here I placed down all the trophies I collected in my house. Day 161 to day 163. Before I went back to the twilight forest I brewed more night vision potions and stocked up on more food and rockets. I then quickly looted some more structures while trying to make more dragon meals and I was pretty far away and decided to search for the frost maw again because I needed it for the overworld quests. Again, no luck on frost maw but I did get a good amount of dragon meals for my fire dragon. Then I had a genius idea. I made a smoker which gave a villager the butcher trade. I ended up trapping one guy but the food he sold couldn't be turned into dragon meal, so he retired. For the next guy, I used the rough emerald shards and a weird book to improve the trade. This guy gave me cooked chickens, which can be turned into dragon meal. So I bought an inventory full of chickens and had 32 dragon meals. I then swapped this butcher with my weapon smith. Then with this new trade, I was able to non-stop feed my fire dragon and get rid of the cow farm. After all of that, my fire dragon was almost stage 5 as well. The funny thing is that now I'm short on bones. Day 164 to day 166. It was now time again to finish off the twilight forest. I started looking for a dark tower to challenge the Urgast. This dungeon was really cool. I jumped in through an opening and started making my way up. As soon as I got on top, this giant gas spawned and started launching fireballs. I got some good hits in, but the punch in my bow kept moving the Urgast further and further. So I tried to fly towards it and do some damage in the air, but it still only kept pushing it away. I then tried to come back hoping it would follow me and then I found these weird contraptions that ate up these smaller gas. Eventually this thing just teleported back to the tower and I was able to see what this redstone machine did. I killed a few mini gas and the machine pulled the ergast in. With that I took it out no problem and my rewards were some fiery blood, a trophy and a nether star. Next up was the Alpha Yeti, who spawns in the Yeti cave. I flew over towards it and this fight was very simple. A large Yeti just spawns in the center and you have to take it out. The reward was a helmet and some Yeti fur. Uh, this is when things started to get a little complicated. I had to fight the Snow Queen, who spawns in the Aurora Palace. I made my way towards it and started breaking some of the top towers, but none of the main ones had the Snow Queen. I explored basically each of the really big towers and only got like chests up top. This alone took me a few days though, but I fought a bunch of cool mohabs on the way. Eventually, I made my way towards one of these towers in the corner and this place had ice staircases. So I assumed I finally got the right spot and slowly making my way up, I found what I needed, the Snow Queen. So the Snow Queen can't be hurt from the bottom and gives slowness 5, it's pretty bad. I would sneak in some shots when the queen would go low though. Then finally, the queen broke down to the bottom floor and I was able to use the stairs to land some hits. I then just waited for the moments for her to bounce down and I was able to take out the Snow Queen. My reward of course was more trophies, a bow and a nice dagger. So if you thought that was complicated, it gets even more complicated now. Turns out I needed a giant pickaxe to mine this huge obsidian box and get a lamp that can burn through these thorns. But since I didn't eat that meat stroganoff thing like 20-30 days back, I was still taking damage in the highland biomes and in the giant clouds. I even made my way down these caves thinking that I'd be safe from the damage, but no. Uh, then I thought to try to take down these giants, but again they didn't take any damage. After some more research I finally decided to eat the food that I needed and I got tons of new resistances. Now I could finally explore these stupid biomes. 
Before I moved on to another cave, I fought these giants and got myself a giant sword and a giant pickaxe. The next cave had the huge obsidian box, which I used the giant pickaxe to break into and pick up the lamp. So I used the lamp to burn through the thorns and I found a huge castle. I also made my way into it and then I saw some signs that said it was not yet implemented so no more boss battles. Turns out getting the lamp was like the last boss type thing to do because the final quest was in some place called the quest groove. The questing ram over here needed every type of wool and I already had a bunch so I gave those over to it and it added onto the ram's torso. I also used all the flowers I had in my inventory to make more dyes and gathered all the wools I didn't have and then I scoured this dimension to pick up all the flowers I could. It took a little bit but I'm pretty sure I gave this ram every color of wool. Well, let me know in the comments if I missed one. Even then, I didn't get a quest word or anything so I snatched this ram up with a quantum catcher and brought it right in front of my house. I tied it to a fence and tried over and over again with most of the wool to see if I missed anything but still no luck. On the bright side though, all of my dragons are stage 5. Day 175 to 178. I expanded my storage system again, but it took up way too much space on the bottom, so I had a better idea. I made tons of tier 3 chests and went down to the mines to create a huge storage room. It was going to be a pretty decent sized chest monster, and once I cleared out an entire area, I placed down some tier 3 chests and linked them all up. I brought down the network route and the request table too. After that, the next goal was to move as much of the stuff down here as possible. I was pretty stupid and didn't realize I could have just used a remote to transfer stuff, so I kept going back and forth. This way at least I was able to add more tier 3 chests while I kept moving stuff around. This thing took a couple of days but I had even more chests in here, raised the roof up and actually got everything into these chests. I had to force load these new chunks and then put the tier 2 chests in the back. With all of that done I started decorating. I was on top of my mob spawner so I just used deep slate tile slabs on the two sides closer to the walls. I also sprinkled glowstone on the floor and then in the center I used stone brick slabs separated by oak logs. Then I sprinkled some lanterns around and made all the walls stone bricks. I also textured it with some chisel stone bricks so at least it doesn't all look the same. The last little bit of stuff is where I snuck in some glowstone in between the slabs on the roof and then I covered the link cables as much as I could. I also put a waystone down here and uh, this is probably where I'm going to be spending most of my time now. So I moved my furnaces down here and then I made the bottom of my house another trophy room. Day 179 while I was decorating I wanted to see what kind of furniture there were. So I made some chairs and tables and then sprinkled these blinds around the windows of my house. After that I tried out these upgraded fences which looked cooler than the posts. Last but not least I actually made my bedroom into a room and not just an open space so it has a door and a roof now. Day 180 to day 183 there are a few more dimensions I needed to explore before I take on the abyss. First was the afterlife. Now this dimension is very weird to even get into. I started by getting some void rocks and moon crystals down in the mines. Then I made a ritual altar and just kept this thing outside for now. Next up I I made this thing called a mundane hammer to smash these moon crystals into moon crystals dust. So this is the recipe to make strange obsidian or whatever it's called but the ritual just wasn't working. I found out that it was because it was still day so I moved the altar down to the storage room and once it became dark I made a bunch of strange obsidians and the staff of moonlight which activates the portal. I also ended up getting some lore books and I swapped this everdon portal for the afterlight one and lit it up. This dimension was really empty though and there was nothing to do except kill some mobs and pick up some of the neat looking blocks. I then quickly came home to set up for the Miviral, I don't even know how to say it, the Miviral dimension, which sounded cool. So in order to get to this dimension, you needed the forgotten tail and I just needed some warped warp block. Boy was I stupid, I completely forgot those blocks just spawn on the warp trees. So guess what I did? I traveled around the villages to get a villager who I could turn into a lumberjack just for the chance to get the warp warp block. I even maxed this dude out so it was not my brightest moment. I eventually stopped being an idiot and just went down to the nether to grab these warped warp blocks. Now I had the forgotten tale and started reading it. It was a story about a beautiful dimension which was ruined by like a young wizard and I was getting excited. It then gave me the option to go to the dimension which I did and it turns out the bosses were coming soon and not implemented yet. So I used the new book to come back home. Lucky for me I spawned pretty far away and decided to complete another quest while I was here. I found an ice maze biome and started destroying these pillager structures. The main goal was to get the bad omen effect which I did eventually. I then flew back towards the village and started locking villagers in their homes. Then I took out the first wave of the raid which was really easy. The only problem I had were these stupid spawns. Aside from that I started decimating the pillagers wave by wave. With the help of whatever guards were left I got to wave 3 pretty easily. This is when ravagers started coming in but it was still pretty easy. Now this is when the annoyingness was turned up. Tons of evokers and of course these stupid illusioners. I took out those guys easily 
easily. And as night started, the next wave also started. So I think I found the most annoying mobs here. These jesters. They give you wave 3, which means you can't jump for a bit. Also, the evokers were now wearing diamond armor. My inventory was filled to the brim. But after taking out this one last dude, I became the hero of the village. One quest left in the overworld. Day 187, I quickly teleported home and placed the abyss portal down. I also lit that bad boy up and then I used these ancient tomes to get power 10 on my bow. I added some posts in the storage system and I made an area to show off the cool armor I had. For now, I put the tungsten armor here and made some naga armor with all the scales I had. I then moved all the twilight forest trophies down here as well. Now everything's been leading to this moment, it was time to check out the abyss dimension. I ended up spawning in some cave which wasn't that bad of a spawn. It was also next to a mine shaft. Immediately, I started mining whatever I could. I got some regular iron and this lorn ore which basically is used to make every single thing from this dimension. I then got this thing called Glacerith which looked like it would make some really nice gear. I spent a decent amount of time in the mines because my pickaxe was insta mining everything. I got a little carried away strip mining. My vision cone though was turning blue which I think meant the fear effect was happening. So I came home and had tons of ores to smelt and lots of night vision potions to make before I hop right back in. This time I mined towards the abyss overworld and set my waystone down. I explored this crazy place and found two bosses in a biome. The first one was an Abyssor, which gave me nausea and fear, but it wasn't too tough. And the second one was a Roka, who wasn't affected by my bow, but it did get shredded by my sword. It also dropped a Roka horn, one of the five ingredients to make an Eye of Abyss. After exploring this dungeon, I ended up circling right back to the mineshaft I spawned near, went right back down to the mine I made. I kept mining for a pretty long time, but eventually my vision got way too blue and the fear effect started doing tons of damage. Also, this meant I couldn't use my warp stone, so I had to fly out and find my portal. At least I got some new ores like this Incorite. For the next few days, I kept mining to get some of this cool new ore and I started exploring some of these different biomes. I actually ended up clearing out a huge chunk of the mines at diamond level, but I had no luck with any of these cool ores. I didn't get a single one. Instead, I did find the Elder, who was a boss I needed to take out. This guy was just chilling on a mountain and I was able to freeze it with my sword, take it out and then collect the Elder Eye. This was another ingredient for the Eye of Abyss. Before the fear took over, I found a ruined structure where I think I would have to place this Eye of Abyss once I craft it. Day 193 to day 195, the goal for these days was to simply challenge the final boss of the Abyss. Before that though, I would have to take out the other mini bosses left. First up in this very colorful biome, I saw the crystal golem's health bar pop up, but I just could not find it and it eventually just despawned. Over this mountain was another one of those biomes and I managed to find the crystal golem here. This one was just hiding in a tree, pretty nicely camouflaged. I took it out easily and picked up the crystal hand. My fear was getting out of control so I teleported back home and made an eye of abyss. There was another mini boss, but no matter what I just could not find it and the wiki didn't even have an entry on it. On my travels towards the altar, I fought these soul guards who dropped these soul hearts and this would be needed to even start the ritual. I started the ritual by lighting the pillars with this soul fire and once they were all lit, I sacrificed the eye of the abyss. After the lightning barrage, the night blade spawned and I was finally able to do some damage to it after a little bit. Until another lightning bolt launched and it launched every other mob around the area into the air. The night blade was barely taking any damage and when it did, it would just launch me back in the air with a bunch of other mobs. I still pressed the on and attacked as much as I could, slowly lowering its health down to half. Since it also brought other mobs closer to you, I had to take out a bunch of these guys too. As soon as the Nightblade let go though, for a few seconds I was able to do tons of damage while dodging its lightning bolt and finally take it out. My rewards were two Swords of the Abyss and a whole lot of quest rewards which included some Slime Fusion and Unirith. I quickly did a sweep around to check if I could find a magician, but even after going through some cool structures, there was no luck. So for me, there's always going to be one boss left in this dimension. When I came home, I wanted to make an arcane workbench, but it required a weird type of wood that I didn't have. So I had to go right back and pick up some Baru wood. With that, I placed down this arcane workbench and looked at what rings I wanted, but the good ones were really expensive and I didn't have much time. So no rings for now. Day 197 to day 200, I didn't have much time. So with all the waystone I had collected, I just traveled thousands of blocks looking for this frost mob. A few thousand blocks away, my explorer's compass finally picked up a frost mob spawn. But right before I took it out, I wanted to make something cool. It was called a spectral eye. So I came back, made these weird name dust things, and that made arcane gold ingots. And with those ingots, I was able to craft this one thing. Now this spectral pendant thing highlights a bunch of mobs and entities for me. This item is really cool. The only problem is, is that it completely tanks your computer. Every time I turn it on, it would get like weird chunk errors. I did end up finding the frost mob though, and I took this behemoth straight on. 
after it died, I had fully completed the overworld quests and most of the other dimensions. To end these days off, I placed all of my stage 5 dragons right in front of my base to just see how far I've come.